All right, it says it's recording. Ready or not, we're never ready. Never ready. We're at where we are at. We, we are ever ready and we are never ready. Oh, I almost wanted to leap off of that to talk about a uh, philosophical discussion on readiness. Um, that'll be in the next one. Uh, the first thing I got to talk to you about, Rob, uh, is that Google Plus Hangouts thing. That's the first thing we have to address before we talk about anything else, because that's super exciting. Yeah. It is. Have you had a chance to try it out yet? No, no. I mean, it was just announced yesterday at the time of this recording. So oh. what is it? Sure. Well, all right. Uh, what Google Hangouts, uh, I think they got changed. I saw an email come in just hours ago saying, oh, we changed the name to uh, Messenger, I think. Which I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, might be worth doing a quick internet search on that to verify. But uh, essentially, Hangouts are where you can go to just video phone call, video chat, yep. sort of uh, piecing together a few different uh, Google projects and products that make sort of uh, just a group phone call experience. But what's interesting is, um, as soon as that, that popped up, I thought, I have to share my desktop here. Um, because... It's uh, it's something that I did for a, I experimented with for a little bit, but I uh, never really quite found a groove with uh, uh, UStream or Justin TV and whatnot. Yep. And uh, I was excited, and I kept tweaking with the settings, but I could never get it to see my desktop. Now recently, they said now you can share your desktop, which is huge. As uh, oh yeah, you know, artists we can sh we can stream our digital workday right there. For sure. We could work together. A bunch of us could be all there online uh, drawing anything. For instance, uh, one thing that came up on uh, during the Comics Are Great recording, which I caught like the second half of earlier today, um, was uh, a discussion about 24-hour comic day. Yep. And uh, that is just a sweet combination. could possibly um, get a bunch of us together, which... Um, I have I have committed to do twenty four hour comic. Oh, why? Why do you want to do that to yourself? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So far, um, uh, I worked third shift for enough years. Yeah. In my in my you know early twenties and uh, well, late teens and early twenties, where I still have what I call a broken internal clock. Yeah. But and also a bit of a uh, masochistic streak, I take it. With everything you got in your plate right now, you're gonna take on 24-hour comic day too. Ugh. it's only like 24 hours though. But it's gonna kill not... three days for you. you how, how are you to recover after that? Meditation. <laughs> <laughs> and the pure need to respond to my wife and daughter's needs after that. Oh, man, you are out of your mind. I, I don't know how you do it or why you do it, but you're out of your mind. There's no way I could do that to myself. Not right now. Maybe next year. But, yeah, going back to the Hangouts thing, yeah, we talked about this at the end of Comics Great episode 28, which is at comicsgreat.com slash CAG28. Nobody's going to remember that anyway. Uh, but it'll be linked on leanintoart.com. Um, but, yeah, we talked about that a little bit, about this dream that I've had for several years now. Ever since I first encountered video streaming, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to aggregate a whole bunch of feeds like Brady Bunch style tiles on a screen of a bunch of like-minded friend artists, and they do 24-hour comic day, broadcast it all lives. So you can watch these guys slowly fall apart over a 24-hour period. And gals. Um, another idea that I've had in this Google Hangout thing totally makes this possible is... Have I told you this story before? Um, it might be completely apocryphal. I'm not sure because uh, I don't remember where I read it. But there's a story about in the 60s, some group of cartoonists. Now, remember, this is the 60s. Cartoonists were not respected in comics at any rate. They were rich cartoonists. But in the comic book industry, you guys were essentially you know, just you know, lackeys, right? I mean, amongst readers, they were respected. In their industry, they were abused. Is that, does that sound fair? I don't want to sound like I'm you know, diminishing the work of the guys in the 60s because brilliant stuff was done. It's just the work standards were not good. Does that sound right? Under, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's my understanding. So this car a cartoonist was contacted by his editor and said, hey, um, we're going to do an 80-page giant special of 
issue of this comic, and I forget what it was. And he said, oh, great, when's it due? And this was Friday afternoon. He's like, Monday. So this guy was facing through an 80 pages over the weekend, so he gathered up a whole bunch of his buddies, and uh, they locked themselves in a hotel room and just stayed up all weekend doing an 80-page giant, and they did it. Even if the story's not true, it's a great story, right? It's a very inspiring story. It's like, wouldn't that be fun to just lock yourself in a hotel room and slowly go insane with a bunch of people trying to meet this crazy deadline? And uh, and, and also, I'm sold there's... already. What's that? <laughs> I'm sold already. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard? Is it probably not a good idea? Let's Will do it. Will it be a, grow, a growing experience? I'm I'm fired up already. <laughs> that that is a T-shirt for you. I want to make you a T-shirt with like screen printing stuff. That says, "Is it hard? Is it probably not a good idea?" <laughs> Check a box. Yes. <laughs> uh, Edit to my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I thought, wouldn't it be cool to do the same kind of thing where you get six, seven different cartoonists together and set up an arbitrary intellectual property and deadline okay so we're going to come up with a fake intellectual property and we're going to have we're going to do it in 36 or, or i don't know you know three four days that's all, all you've got and you split up the workload amongst all of you so it's like okay i'm going to pencil pages and then once i got on pencil i'm going to send you the digital blue line and you start inking and as soon as you finish the inks you pass it over to jimmy over here he's going to do the colors and then as soon as he's done with the colors pass it over to him for lettering right and we don't even know what's going to happen in the story yet we're just going to dive in and do it and then you broadcast the whole thing on brady bunch style tiles on a video stream wall so people can watch the whole thing happening. You're talking to each other while it's happening to keep each other keep each other motivated, keep each other uh, interested and on on task or whatever. Uh, and it becomes a spectacle for the whole world to see. And you record it and you redistribute it afterwards as a video podcast and whatnot. And you get to watch this docu documentary style thing unfold as a creative project comes together. And you watch everybody panic as they try to get through it. It's both a spectacle, but it's also a window into how the creative process works. And you got this thing you can sell at the end. You got a book, you got an 80 page book you can sell on the internet or wherever it shows. You got something to show for all that 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 agony. That is a really cool idea, and this Google Hangout thing just makes it totally possible and free. You know, because oh yeah, it's uh, because the tech is available, but something like this just lowers the barrier so far. Oh yeah, you'd have to pay for a premium Skype account. You would have to uh, or get the Go to Meeting to do something like this, right? Or even like this Go Adobe Connect stuff. You know, you'd have to get something like that in order to do it. But now, boom, there it is. It's just free, and it could be oh, broadcasted. Yeah. One downside, as far as I understand, the broadcasting of the Hangouts only works with Google Plus users. Like you can't just be you can't be not logged in and see it. No. From what I was reading, okay, that's kind of a down. But there's a workaround for that. <laughs> but anyway, it was just super exciting, and there's too many possibilities. I mean, like my my brain went crazy when you posted that link. On, on Google Plus, uh, like just thinking of all the things you could do with that. So, so exciting. Uh, oh, yeah. When it, it popped across my radar and I was busy with like 10 other things, I'm like, oh, this has to go. <laughs> you know, I have to comment because it, it's really exciting. Um, and I was thinking about, I, I was just talking with my buddy, uh, my best buddy Hoover. I talked to him every week and, and I was telling him about this and I was getting, talking a million miles an hour because I was so excited about it. And uh, I said to him, or he said to me, he's like, dude, remember in 2006 when you did, I recorded audio commentaries with him for my comic, my graphic novel, The Front. And uh, he's like, remember how much trouble you went through to figure out how to record a Skype call? <laughs> <laughs> and and it, like, I had to record on two different audio channels and like sync them up after the fact. So every time we start recording, we have to go three, two, one, clap so we could actually sync up our, our voices and everything. And then like editing in GarageBand was really hard back then. And it's just like, wow, you know, five years. That's it. Five years. And now we've got group video chat that we can broadcast to anybody in the world. I don't want to sound like this kind of blinky-eyed, like wide-eyed kid going, oh, the future's great. But sometimes the future is great. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's it's awesome. It's it's great that, that this this is available to then explore the possibilities. Um, and I, I like that idea. Um, so if you do... <laughs> Is it is it difficult? How did it go? Is it is it is it difficult? Is it probably a bad idea? Yep. Checkbox. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know what it is. I, I guess that's like a creative extreme sports attitude or something. Um, I don't know. Let's start our own network, our own uh, like yeah, like like the X Games, but for uh, cartoonists. 
doing dangerous things to themselves over a very long protracted period of time so instead of like crashing into the wall or whatever and everybody going ooh it's like you look at them 5 years later and you see how much they prematurely aged and go ooh that'll that'll be it that'll be the payoff watching our extreme sports um yeah so do we need to go to the topic then that was just the one thing i mean we we i guess we can put in the show notes uh links to the google plus hangouts thing and oh they opened it up to the public so anybody can sign up now oh yeah exactly that's uh that's good news i'm intrigued um let's see when we started this conversation uh, you really uh planted a an interesting thought do you want to re circle back to that topic or do you want yeah, to no. uh go, go where you want to go where i want to go well i didn't take a note other than remember jersey said something cool in the beginning beginning of the podcast but <laughs> um, oh was it that thing when i said about um never being ready never being ready what's funny is uh we were talking in preparation for this episode of uh going drilling down and into a little more hands-on yeah. but i think the philosophy is just too darn too darn tempting and um you know if you're gonna <clears throat> gonna be betting odds against jersey and i for sure not getting philosophical um <laughs> yeah <laughs> may as well buy a lottery ticket yeah yeah go to a casino play some blackjack yeah. better odds there so what so what about uh you know never being ready Well, I I think it, it's probably an, an interesting echo of uh, of just a general theme about um, uh, just moving forward. Yeah. In spite of um, it, it, it's it's just way too easy. With um, I've done podcasts on this before, thinking about to having just a huge wish list and set of expectations about what I what I want in a certain situation before I move forward, right? So for this project, I really got to, you know, think about the world some more. Oops, there's these different, I'll go up and down all these le to different levels and, and background stuff on, on writing, for instance, versus just writing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what we were talking about last time, uh, the last episode where we were saying something about, like, if you sit around and wait till you can draw everything perfectly, you'll never get anything drawn, right? You'll never get any stories finished. Uh, and that kind of ties into a sense of never feeling ready. But at the same time, that can trickle down into everything that you do. I mean, something I struggle with a lot. And I thought about posting this on Google+, Plus, but you want to know what? I stopped myself from doing it because I didn't feel ready to share the idea. And the idea that I was trying to share was a sense of never feeling ready and never feeling like you, what your idea, the, the, the thought that you want to pitch for discussion is fully baked. And how how wonderfully is it ironic i don't know if it's ironic but it, it's it was funny how i had this thing cooking in my belly saying like you know i find myself every time typing three words into the thing whether it's a blog or it's a thing on google plus or whether it's a thing on twitter and then i stop reconsider and back off and then i don't do it and then i wondered to myself i wonder if any other artists really struggle with this because like sometimes you see people's social media streams or their blogs and it seems like they're just kicking out whatever's going on in their heads and with like absolute ease i worry too much sometimes about how whatever i've made is going to be received because maybe it's not fully baked maybe my idea is not fully baked and i want to come off as being as polished and smart as possible and so because of that I stop myself from actually engaging. And so then I just won't be on online essentially for like a week at a time because I'm too caught in my own thoughts about is the idea ready, you know? And, and that actually kind of ties into what you wanted to talk about initially about like doing surveys and self-reflection, you know? Because actually, yeah, I think it does. What's funny is I, I, I identify with what you said there is with, um, I mean, I have oodles and oodles of, of Evernote uh, clippings basically where it's like, I'm starting a tweet, do, 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 nope, <laughs> cut, paste into Evernote and table it, possibly, because I, I, I always think about, uh, well, what sort of, um, what dialogue do I, am I, what am I seeking by providing this information? Um, am I trying to uh, just vent, which means I probably want to, um, to hear others uh, echo a similar feeling or whatever, or and then I think, well, no, I really don't want to dwell on this if it's a if it's a negative thing, right. um, <clears throat> because it, I respect it too when other people actually don't filter that. But 
just you know long 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 point short because I could you know prattle on as as far as you know the the different sides of doing this and once in a while I'll share like a silly thought but it's it's definitely nothing meant to uh, uh, be like deeply revealing about you know, inner challenges or frustrations or what have you. And anytime I do do that, it's about uh, framing it up in a positive manner so that it's something useful. So I try to always share something useful, right? So in other words, in other words, Rob, you spin it. Is that what you're doing? You spinning it? Is it spin? Um, it's genuinely me because uh, that's what I do when I'm frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I try to find something positive that I can use to build out of the situation. And and if I can't, then I just move on, which is it, the most positive thing I can do. What, what, what you're saying reminds me of something that I, I, oh, I once dated an awful, awful human being who uh, used to say to me all the time, don't be happy, be real, as if somehow accentuating the positive was, you know, absurd. You know, it, it was being disingenuous to focus on the positive. Um. And I can see I think there's context where that could be, you know, it, it it can be okay to just let it let something fly or whatever. But sure. uh, but again, in a in a public venue, I mean, Twitter is like shouting out to the whole internet. It's cool if that's your style. Yeah. So I, I assume this um, um, the person that you you from your from a previous relationship was a uh, <laughs> um would probably tweet stream of consciously. Yes, I would imagine. Yes. Okay. Uh, this happened at the post office and I'm so GD mad about it, that kind of stuff, you know, that, that would be the kind of stuff you'd hear from her. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, in, but, but I mean, that, that's, that's not to say that that's what made her a rotten person. <laughs> that was just yeah. a character, a All char of you stream of consciousness people on Twitter, no. Jersey hates you. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. I'm, I'm going to kill I'm going to, I'm going to corner you. I'm going to try to put you in a corner here and I'm going to ask you. Do you judge people sometimes for what they say like that? Like if somebody says something that, you know, cause like, let me see if mm -hmm. I can, if I can couch this in a way where people won't know what I'm talking about. There was an, uh, an incident a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, maybe a month ago, where somebody said something kind of disparaging about somebody that I knew. And the somebody that I knew felt bad about it. And I rushed to this friend's defense, not online, but in a personal email. Because one, I'm not going to get involved in a public dispute between people that I'm not involved in. But I'm going to let my friend know that, hey, I care about how you feel. And if you're feeling bad, I'm going to try to make you feel better about it, right? And I said to this person, I said, you know, everybody gets to say whatever they want. And that's good. That person can have a, a, a dim opinion of you if they want to. You can have a dim opinion of them. Uh, they maybe they should have thought twice before they vo voiced it publicly. They could have done that in a different way. That's too bad. Uh, but the main thing is, is that they're operating out of a sense of embarrassment on their own behalf and has nothing to do with you. You just happen to be the trigger that triggered that embarrassment. So don't try not to feel bad about it. You know, we're going to say stu stupid things online eventually. It happens. Uh, but but you know what? The, what that person did when they said that thing. I'm being so vague. You know, it set a lot of people off. A lot of people got mad about it, right? And even I was okay. like, mm, did you have to do that? Mm, that's too bad that you would, uh, you know, fly off the handle. Say it. What did I do? Just tell everyone what I did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to back off now because I've just been really, really vague. But anyway, do you get what I'm saying here? Uh, what I'm asking is, is like, do you ever find yourself judging when somebody else, like, kind of flies off the cuff like that? Sure, I'm human. Yep. yep. I, I, uh, I'll think, uh, uh, it's kind of, it's not a uh, a black and white thing. There isn't like a final judgment, I guess. If, if your question is, is it like a, a I'm done switch that gets flipped and it's forever? Yeah, yeah. I, that's not how. Uh, that's that's not my approach. But um, but in the moment, I'll be uh, I'll be disappointed and and think, wow, I'm really surprised. I didn't uh, I didn't expect this person to be so mean to this other person. Right. That's that's unfortunate. Um. And and then wait to see what else transpires, and uh, you know try to be supportive on the sideline and or whatever if if that seems appropriate, but um, but not really uh, try to engage in that, uh, try to extend some kind of negative conflict or whatever, um, or 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 announce you know I disapprove action, yeah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> like I was really dis- I was really disappointed when I when I was uh, reading Wikipedia and I found out H.P. Lovecraft was quite the racist, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That was a bummer. <clears throat> um, but I, I guess I, I mean I judge him based on his uh, his his creations as well. It's interesting that uh, uh, our creations aren't. We're like as an artist, your your creations are. You are context for them, and you're not, <clears throat> because it's really up to to who, uh, whoever wants to. If if they're consuming of it, it's only valid. It's, so, for instance, uh, if if you have to have a DVD with behind the scenes, otherwise, what's the point? Um, and then they see the behind the scenes, and they see that well, wow, that that actor is kind of a jerk. Um, but that's part part of their deal. It has to be everything fine. Or someone can just watch a movie, and not care about the actors, and and you know that's a product in and of itself. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be judgmental in the moment. Yeah, but, but I, but be, but I also probably hold on to it too, and don't. That's know, where I was around. going. That's exactly where I was going. Is I was wondering if the hesitation of engaging sometimes, and 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 uh, not a, a feeling of not feeling ready to, because the idea is not fully baked or whatever, is out mm-hmm. of well, I don't want to be that guy. You know, that's what I wonder if what's cooking, if, if that's cooking in the back of my head, like if I'm being just so, so judgmental about it. And so, ooh, I don't want to be that guy. You know, I wonder if that's part of what's informing my hesitation, because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not. Maybe it is, but I don't know. I mean, like, at least in the, in over here in the front of my big, shiny pink head, uh, I don't think it's a lack of self-esteem. I don't think it's that I don't think I'm smart or that my ideas aren't worth voicing. Uh, but it's it's a fear of how is this going to be received? How is this going to uh, ultimately be reacted to? And am I going to be perceived in such a way? Oh, isn't that awful? I shouldn't feel that way. I should never feel that way. Yeah, that is a toughie. I mean, because I know that that's what stops me too. And, you know, just to... Uh, if I'm having a particularly challenging month, you know, being the kind of person who who probably should wear a shirt like you described earlier, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I go through a fair amount of stress with the, some of these uh, creative challenges and projects and all that stuff and life and family, whatever. But um, And that's one one time where I'll get quiet, where I'm just kind of ebbing and back and forth between like, yeah, I'm, you know, having a, I'm, I'm pretty frustrated behind, behind the gun or whatever, trying to get certain things done and, you know, for clients and creative projects or whatever. Um, but I won't grump about it publicly. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think we're both probably guys who think of our interactions online as the way we behave when we're out grocery shopping, right? I'm not going to be yeah. at the grocery store going, what the F is this? This F and price is no F and good. And get over here, you mother effer, because I want to F and talk to you about this F and, and not the swearing part, but just the aggression, right? Like, you know, uh, if I see, I did the right thing. I did the right thing just now. See, so we both do it. Uh, I know. Guilty. Yeah. Uh, Send me to the Phantom Zone, uh, but but you know what I mean, like like just like that kind of unfiltered aggression, right? And there's some people who do that out in the real world, and and that's fine. But uh, but anyway, that that that's the the rule of thumb I always tell people is like when people say like, oh well, <laughs> when I was at Kids Read Comics and I used a swear word uh, when I was in some mixed company of cartoonists, and I remember Raina Telgemeier said, "Did Jersey just swear?" And I'm like, "Well, dude, I yeah, I do, you know." So when when I'm when I'm really tired or frustrated or something, but when I'm at the grocery store, I don't, and when I'm online, I'm at the grocery store. So, right. Yeah, so I think it's fair enough to have a, um, a measured approach. Well, one of the reasons why I think it's helpful to have a measured approach, not to say that's the only right way or whatever, because I seriously really love and respect many artists and people who yep. just let it all hang out. Yep. I think that is awesome. But it's in my personality and some of the like things that I do that I find are helpful and allow me to you know earn a living and whatnot. Um, it comes from that measured approach and being good at it and um and i i have a chance to learn and that that if i if i hold back and and take some time to observe whatever's going on and and see not just that moment because get some context how did it how did it come to this moment what's going to happen after that yeah and then oftentimes i have way more information to act upon and when i do act i feel 
quite fine with whatever I end up choosing because that's the key for me. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's your way of coping with the consequences of a situation because you know that the next time you're going to be a little bit more prepared for it and that makes it easier to get through the situation that you're getting. That's just a, it's just a coping mechanism. It's a way to get through this whole business of being a human being, right? Uh, but so in other words, here's, here's me trying to do a segue into mm-hmm. talking about surveys. So you give yourself a survey. When, when, after enduring a life experience, right? You want to hear something lame? I'll, I'll set this up and I'll, and I'll take, I'm going to take the bullet to be the lame guy and then you could be the cool guy. Um, so I was going through one of my regular attacks of did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing while I was driving in my car back from a, a meeting this morning? And I was doing the, that horrible thing where you let it to start to make you feel kind of bad and you, you can feel your mood just kind of settling and getting lower and lower. And it's like, I got work to do today. I cannot be in this mood. I got to psych myself up. I got to get myself out of this. And like some people will like do like slap in the chest and like, boom, we're going to get pumped. I'm going to scream at the mirror or whatever. Um, <laughs> what I found myself doing, and this actually worked, and I feel so, like such a goof because I, it worked, is that you ever heard of like the... Um, Hindu mythology, or Hindu mythology, but Hindu religious kind of uh, concept of, I am not myself, I am the witness, right? Mm-hmm. This body is in pain, I am not in pain, I am the witness, that kind of idea. I kind of went through this little <laughs> ritual of chanting like, I am not depressed, I am the witness to this depression. I am, I am, <laughs> I am not uh, gonna, I'm not freaking out about this, I'm a witness to freaking out about this. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was I was fine again. It was like I, I just distanced myself from the whole thing. And I don't know if that's just like some kind of stupid psychological trick. But anyway, um, this whole idea of like reflecting on what's happening to you in order to uh, better equip you for getting back in the game, but also being better equipped to deal with the situation again. So like, and this is where surveys come in, right? What's a survey about? Starts a conversation. Why does it start a, conversa- start a conversation? Because it gets you thinking about your choices. And we had some talks before we did these, so this show even. It's like some like behind the scenes talks of like what kind of surveys work best. You did a survey first. I did the second survey or poll, we should call them actually. We did two polls on the Lean Into Art site, leanintoart.com. And yours was emotional. Mine was a little bit more abstract and vague. Does that sound fair to say? Uh, I would call it a rational trap. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that makes it sound like I did something clever. That was incredibly clever. Um, because it, one of the things you can do when you have a lot of um, choices that are fairly equivalent is then start attaching um, a, uh, reasons and a dialogue and a story as far as, well, I feel more strongly about this choice because of this way I identify myself and, and what have you. And, and like, for instance, to get more specific, your survey was about um, when do you get your best work done? And the choices were uh, early in the morning, afternoons, evenings, late at night, when I should be sleeping, right after a nap, when I should be working on something else, and finally, when the deadline is fast approaching. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and some of those choices. I'm weren't... joking around. It, no, that's a really good one too. It, I, not to just, I'm not trying to insult it or whatever, but like it's funny in that. I mean, it's you can chew on those to infinity. <laughs> you wanted to, and that was the idea. It's like I was intentionally trying to do something where it could be it's like. I, I remember being in school. I remember remember getting frustrated with multiple choices where. It seemed to me at the time that answers B and C are equally valid and there's no all of the above, right? So it's like, what am I going to pick here? And I would remember getting really frustrated by that and it got me to think really hard and I, and I never, as usual, I never came to an answer that I felt satisfied with, but I just kind of went, well, the clock is ticking, check one, right? Or circle one or whatever. Um, so I just thought, like, well, this will be a fun game to play on the site. Let's see who interacts with this and let's see if we can get a conversation started out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you pointed out a really interesting point about uh, your poll is that yours was operating out of a sense of um, emotion and it kind of came out of a conversation we had about Starbucks a couple weeks ago right yeah it did uh, I thought it was brilliant because we uh, I, I love books about how we decide things 
right? How do, how do our minds work? And, and it, I, I, it's fun to help me come up with new approaches to create things, both in an artistic context, you know, storytelling, comics, and uh, um, doing design work. Because uh, a lot of design work, um, like user interface design, you need some kind of system, some kind of approach. And uh, these hunting for that kind of information is always a way to, to keep building a toolbox of approaches and, and techniques to frame stuff up and present them and whatnot. And you you just you provided a gold nugget of of uh, a, of a anecdote when what so you went to a Starbucks and and uh, went, you know you yeah ordered, forgive me for that by the way. I know it's not it's not it's not uh, it's not cricket to go to a big corporate coffee place, but uh, it was the only place within walking distance of where I was. Okay, so I mean, really, literally, there's no other coffee within walking distance of where I was. But anyway, yes, I went to Starbucks. Sorry. Ah, corporate coffee. It's still coffee and whatever. Got to do what you got to do. Um, <clears throat> but they had a a, a really interesting uh, tip jar. Instead of one tip jar, there was two. Mm -hmm. And then. They were labeled, and instead of saying um, something like, uh, you know, thanks for the coffee and thanks for the service or something like that, or I don't know, taste great, less filling, yeah. uh, it was actually, well, maybe it was kind of a taste great, less filling thing. It, uh, gosh, what were the two labels? Oh, two uh, on the left things? was classical and on the right was country. And you have yeah. to remember I'm in Ann Arbor, big NPR town. Uh, people who identify themselves for the most part as very educated and oh, by some accounts snobby, uh, although I love this town very deeply. Uh, so I don't think they're snobs, but uh, some people some people have uh, that, yeah, the perception of Ann Arbor. So yeah, I, as I looked at that tip jar, I noticed that the classical side was pretty full and the countryside less full. And uh, I remember looking at the barista, and I was like, "Very nice, nicely done, very clever." Because I bet you're making more tips now, you know. Uh, and I didn't tip, uh, but I, I congratulated them on uh, job well done, engaging somebody's emotions to say, you know, I wasn't going to tip, but darn it, I'm not letting country win this fight, and I'm going to put a dollar in there, right? Yep, exactly. It made it an interactive vote instead of just a um, uh, just a tip. Right, tips are are important and valuable as well, but um, it, it was more incentive to cause that interaction, right? Yeah, and uh, that was definitely what informed the survey I made. Um, uh, analog versus digital. <clears throat> my I my theory that would well, probably doesn't sound very emotional by just blurting that out, but I think if you draw for many hours a week, you care a lot about what you draw, what you use. Mm -hmm. Right, the, your your tools are your faithful companions, and um, your your weapons. Right? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. You hear people getting into arguments over what's which is the best inking tool, and people will fight about it, like argue. Or uh, when you when you say when somebody who draws on paper uh, is confronted with something like the Cintiq, right? Uh, the Wacom Cintiq. Mm -hmm. This goes back to something Ryan Estrada said on a Comics Are Great episode. RyanEstrada.com, super smart guy. Follow him on Google+. Plus. Everybody does. Uh, he said that people... I, mean, I don't know if he actually said this on the air now. Maybe he said this in a talk, uh, discussion we had over drinks one night. Um, he said, you know, people have to feel like they have to defend their choices. Like, even if you aren't asking them to. If you just say, I like this, and they like that, they people feel... Everybody feels this compulsion to say... I like that, and here's why, right? This here's the reasons why I got to defend my decisions in life. I got to defend who I am. Uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier about watching how, how people behave online and going, I don't want to be that guy, you know? Because why? Why do I know that? Because I have a sense of who I am, and I feel like I have to protect it. I have to defend it against other people, right? Uh, even if I'm not under attack. So yeah, eliciting that emotional choice and going back to what you were saying. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to derail you there. But this idea no, no, of no, no, it, it totally fits in even with the the the, um, the field of behavioral economics and how do we decide things. Uh, well, there, the book "How Do We Decide" and the other book uh, that two books I've read a couple times, uh, "How Do We Decide" and "Predictably Irrational." Um, and it's just about trying to understand how people go about choosing things. And one of the the uh, a reinforcing 
conclusion or thesis in, in, in both of those books is that uh, we feel a sense of loss. And so justifying our choices ha has to do with us feeling um, pretty darn negative about being wrong and we're mm -hmm. going to lose something or some part of us is going to die if this isn't correct. Yeah. So uh, it's imperative to be correct which is uh i i think it affects i think it affects everyone if you even if you are a super wizard uh, zen master it's it's still whatever we have the human condition um <clears throat> but even if you're a super uh, zen master you were driven to be a super zen master by something right it's like it's like nobody becomes a shrink because they feel like they're like perfectly well balanced and got a really good control over life <laughs> <laughs> you become that because you're driven by something, right? I know I just made a blanket statement about psychologists, but uh, but or psychiatrists for that matter. But I'm just they saying love that. To talk with them. Was that? Want to? If they have, if if they if they have a, a concern with it, by all means, start a dialogue with us. <laughs> <laughs> you can email me. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. It, it's probably a fair bet that most everybody you can say that. Uh, feel a compul or a aversion to being wrong and uh yeah to some extent i mean if you're even yeah. if you're good at dealing with it it's um it's it's there anyway when you when you when it's framed up in such a way and obviously there are books arguing for a point or whatever and i'm saying i was convinced and whatnot for for the most part uh i found the i found their point resonating so yeah yeah so i mean so you so in other words you made a poll to manipulate people i did so yours was it <laughs> trap and mine is a trick <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what's worse oh, i don't know it's funny <laughs> um so the choices in in the poll i made were uh analog digital hybrid more analog than digital and hybrid more digital than analog and what's illustration <laughs> <laughs> did you did you get any answers for that one none okay it's too serious it's like exactly this is this is how I get my stuff done. Yeah, I'm not going to click the joke. Don't even <laughs> joke. Nobody joked. And it got some discussion going in the Lead Into Art forum, too, which I think is... Oh, you, you, know, you know the comic The Oatmeal, right? Yeah, I've, I've seen it a few times. Uh, have you ever seen the Ignite Talk with the cartoonist who does... He, he did an Ignite Talk uh, in Seattle, I think, that's where he's based out of. And he was, I think the title of his talk was How to Get 5 Million Viewers to Your Site, or something like that. 5 million daily viewers, or 5 million monthly viewers, whatever. And he chalked it all up to playing to people's emotions. And he, I mean, a lot of the oatmeal success comes out of creating polls and uh, creating comics that, um, well, he just, he just did a really popular one that's getting passed around a lot, talking about the Netflix split up how they split their company into two companies and he did it through a, a I think it was a sandwich analogy or like a hamburger analogy or a guy goes into a hamburger place and like oh I'm sorry we don't we don't sell buns anymore you have to go across the street to get buns from the new place you know but you get all the fillings here you know um, oh. <laughs> analogies um, it, it's it's a public service announcement that we need to say analogies can hurt people <laughs> and and uh, they aren't always safe. You need to be careful. <laughs> well, why do you bring that up? I don't know. It's, it was, it's a pretty bad analogy, but it's uh, it sounds like it was worth it for the humor sake and whatever. And because, well, I know I do it all the time. So, <laughs> well, yeah. and you know, I might even be mistranslating it. It, might, it probably was about something else entirely. Uh, my memory might be failing, but anyway, um, he was actually absolutely. Can't, I don't want to say candid, but very straightforward in his Ignite talk about the way to get people engaged with your content is to speak to something they feel really emotionally engaged in and then poke at it. Poke at it. Either either take a side or present them with the two sides that they can take. Uh, and, and again, I only watched his Ignite video once. It was a five-minute talk, so I'm probably uh, you know mis, misquoting him there. I don't want to misrepresent the guy, but people we'll link to it in the show notes. People can go find it and listen for themselves but it essentially drives along the same point as what you're talking about with your poll guys there's so many different ways we could go with this rob you could say all right now let's apply this technique to making comics now we can apply this technique to keeping ourselves from losing our marbles when we're making comics this idea of self-evaluation through creating our own inner polls uh or how can we map this poll 
strategy onto other things in promoting your work, promoting yourself. Going back to the thing that I was talking about earlier, I'm gonna, I'm just, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to buckshot a million options at you and say, where do you want to go? Um, okay. Because you could go back to like my hesitation to post things online and blogs and social media things. Well, like, well, maybe what my inner poll should be, inner litmus test is, is it emotionally engaging? Am I playing to people's emotions? Or is that manipulative? Kind of, maybe a little bit it is, uh, but is that a bad thing? I don't know. Uh, or do we want to go with managing your life as a creative person through self-reflection and creating, gosh, just before we did this recording, I was telling you about a problem I was having that I wasn't sure how to solve. And I said, I'm going to figure it out. And then you went, oh, here's a bullet point list of things you can consider in order to do X to make this problem a little, to mitigate this problem a little bit. Right. So <laughs> where do you want to go? Which, which, which place sounds more interesting? you it's it's funny um i'm going to uh <laughs> it, it's okay uh I, I i pick option d all the above uh what one thing I, I i thought was is interesting uh the reason behind using emotional content uh part of it is that's just how we communicate so being a storyteller uh your point isn't to uh provide a very neutral experience the entire time someone's reading your story right or uh, even uh, providing a piece of art, you you typically are are you have the information that you want to communicate, but you also have the emotion. And that reminds me of uh, this quote that I don't have fully down, but it's a it's from Bruce Lee actually from an old interview where uh, he he was talking. Let's see, what was it about? Um, he was being interviewed about his role in the Green Hornet, I think, and uh, something about why why would how did he get famous or why is why are his movies resonating or whatnot i need to you know this is definitely apocryphal but the interview is real and i did a quick youtube search but i didn't find it but i will for the show notes and um and uh he just said to the interviewer it's emotional content emotional content my friend is is just so critical to how um it's it connects across cultures. It connects, you know, across the the, the human experience, right? And uh, looking at the ideas presented in books like How We Decide and Predictably Irrational, it's a critical part as far as how component as far as how we communicate and how we think about things. So when I say, "Oh, Jersey's uh, survey is a is a trap," and then my survey is a trick, I say that tongue in cheek, and it's. Uh, where where it is genuinely that you could scientifically say there there you go and then you could say well you're a terrible person for doing that <clears throat> fair enough but I would uh, I I would beg to differ because the my intent for providing it is the engagement it's that we're here together and we care about this topic I don't present it because I don't care. And uh, I'm not going to abandon the conversation after, you know, manipulating you or whatnot. Um, I think the difference is, is that at the bottom of the poll, it's not like we have a, do you want to vote? It's, it's a dollar. You know, we're not trying to pull a fast one on anybody. And I think with, even with something like when you're trying to build traffic and build engagement with an audience, that's not really trying to pull a fast one. It's, it's implicit in visiting a website, in putting up a website, you're saying, please come to my website. You don't put up a website because you don't want people to come. And if you put up a poll on there to get people to come to your website, uh, there's no trick in getting their emotions engaged, right? Uh, exactly. Well, it's, uh, I, if the content of the poll is good enough where it does resonate to the audience that shows up, good job for creating valid content, yeah. right? Um, and I just did right again. <laughs> Okay, counter argument. I'm gonna I'm gonna be devil's advocate. Oh, so you're saying that we should all be a bunch of uh, Glenn Beck's and what's what's his opposite number? Uh, oh, what's 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 that gal on? Um, you don't watch broadcast television uh, or no. cable television? Uh, no. Rachel Maddow, Rachel Maddow, and Glenn Beck. Okay. So you're saying we should be like them? We should be incendiary and we should be uh, attack one another and get a uh, user base fired up to fight for your side. Is that what you're saying? 
we can invoke our emotions for a lot of different reasons. And I think their reasons differ from mine. Mine are for uh, positive uh, care and passion, right? Where if you are into this topic and you, you share a love for it like I do, you've this this uh, thing I produced is resonating with you because we're sharing that feeling about the topic. Not because I am manipulating you in a way that is about, I don't want, it, oh, let's see, the other thing is, I want you to be here actively. I don't want you to be here by, by accident or that you uh, are just going along with what I'm saying. I like that we share this feeling about it. And it's not about... Um, setting your opinion aside for mine because I'm an expert. It's we're here to discuss this together. It happens to be the website that I'm controlling the content on, right? But uh, guess what? By providing that, it's giving you a voice as well. I'm so glad you're a dad. You're going to make a great dad when your daughter starts asking you those really tricky questions. You know, because like, like it, for all the good that my dad did, there were times where I asked him some very difficult questions and he'd say, that's because she's a jerk, son. <laughs> and ah, I remember even... I as, got those in me too. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid thinking like, that wasn't a satisfactory answer. You were supposed to say something that was supposed to make me feel better about this. And that didn't make me feel better. <laughs> some days daddy's tired. <laughs> yeah, it was the day when he had the glass that had the ice cubes that uh, clinked a lot, you know? Uh, Brett's not funny. <laughs> Flammable. <laughs> Brett's not funny. Um, but anyway, yeah, okay. So, um, it, it, I love this idea that it's all, it all depends on how you use it. So it's not like, here's the good side of the force and the dark side of the force. It's all one force, and it could just be used in a lot of different ways, is what is the, the kind of Jedi Master you would be. Yeah. Uh, that's not yeah. fair? That's, that's that's true. Very kind of you. <laughs> so I don't know. Is there any place else to go with that? You got any other? You got any other steam in you on this on this topic of the power of surveys, the power of in, in inciting people's emotions? Well, let's see. Um, well, I, I do think that now it connects to um, this other area of your shotgun blast. If we look at Exhibit A. <laughs> where your shotgun hit. Um, <clears throat> we visited, anyway, uh, we'll go to the other side. So you, there, there's a connection as far as the, the emotional content and self-surveying as well. Because in that case, the emotional content is about maybe one of the reasons. Uh, I'll ask you this. You tell me what, what, it's, what it's for. Um, and I'm going to try to not answer my question as I ask it. <laughs> but what do you think the uh, the whole point of expressing some kind of self-questioning system would be, like a self a self survey or a self poll, right? Expressing it, it, you mean? Exp and this may sound redundant, but expressing this thing to myself or expressing it outwardly amongst friends? Uh, initially, to yourself. Truly, self survey. This is all meant to be. In, in information that, that you're using. but And so what would the value be in doing that? Um, Knee-jerk answer, uh, recentering myself. And when I say recentering myself, putting myself in a position where I'm at, I'm at ease and feel confident in what I can do. Um, you ever watch Gordon Ramsay on anything he's done? That kitchen guy, the angry kitchen guy, he says the F word a lot. Really funny. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, proper use of the F word is a pretty darn funny thing. But um, no, I haven't seen him. Yeah, he actually uses it very, very well. He's one of the kitchen few... nightmares. I've kitchen heard nightmares. Of, yeah. That's that's the show. Okay. Uh, the show is like, eh, but he's fun to watch. Uh, but what I was really taken with, the thing that's worth watching that show for is when you watch that guy move. It's it's not like he's like some kind of artist in the kitchen, but all of his moves are very <laughs> deliberate. There's there's nothing in his movements that says, like, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. It's always like it's, he's in full command of himself, right? He owns himself. That's what I'm talking about. These self-surveys, these self-polls are a way to get back in command of myself, 
feel like I'm operating out of a sense of this is where I feel like I can move uh, with that kind of sense of purpose and, uh, and, and not trip myself up with a bunch of stupid self-doubting garbage to talk, talk myself out of actually making something today. Right. Cause I mean, I don't know about you, but I've done it plenty of times, talked myself out of doing the thing I want to do, the, the drawing I want to do, because, uh, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it right now. Uh, and then, and then, and then the second thought comes in and says, but you're a professional, you do this professionally. When somebody p gives you money, you can do it whether or not you feel like it. Uh, and then, and then I go, oh my God, maybe I'm not a professional. Maybe, maybe I'm just a hack and I'm a fake and I've been, I've convinced all these fools that I'm, I'm somehow good at this stuff when I'm really not. And it just goes down and down and down. And then now you can't move That's like that. You can't do those, those deliberate movements. So this, this reassessment, this is saying, okay, jurors, here's your bullet pointed list of how you define yourself. Let's go back and look at that. Are you meeting these, you know, standards you set for yourself? Ding, 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 ding. I've re-examined this idea. I've held it up to what, this is quoting Richard Feynman again. We take what we hear, hold it up to what we know to be true. If they don't meet, well, that's that, right? So you do that and then you recenter yourself and then I'm back at the drawing board and I've cleared my mind of all that garbage. Does that make any sense? <clears throat> Devil's advocate hat coming on. All right. Um, you know, that that sounds all fine, fine and good if you have um, all the time in the world to be wasting thinking about those kinds of things. <laughs> Hey, you know my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, you're breaking my my. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to break your character. My role playing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> could you dress like her too? Then we could do some real role playing. I do have long hair, but I don't know. That's true. Um, no thanks. <laughs> uh, how about? Uh, it does sound. Um. um Try to be devil's advocate junior then so that that just does sound like a lot of work yeah it does uh, i mean well what so you feel right about it but isn't it just isn't it too late sometimes sometimes it is sometimes you chalk it up to a wasted day uh i i've had my share of wasted days and one of the things i've tried to to, to really learn how to do is to let wasted days happen. Uh, and this is not to advocate laziness or, um, you know, uh, sloppy thinking or to be glib or flip about a career. Uh, but if you, if you're spiraled down too far and you can't talk yourself out of that situation, sometimes it's just, it's the only thing you can do to save yourself is to chalk it up to a wasted day. And now I'm going to watch TV or now I'm going to go take a nap. Now I'm going to go get lost in some old comic books that I haven't read in a while. Uh, now I'm going to put on my headphones and put on my cartoon theme song playlist and just get lost in that. Getting lo the, the thing to do then is just lose yourself in something else so you can come back to it fresh the next day and at least give it another solid college try, right? Um, but going back to the work part of it is, yeah, so what? So what? Like anything is work, right? Anything worth doing is work. And if, if that's <laughs> the thing I tell myself is, is that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff. First of all, I'm doing like what I always dreamt of doing when I was a kid. I'm making comics. I'm, I'm living in comics. Every day I get up, all I have to do is think about comics. And here's like the second thing I try to remind myself is I'm working in a field where I can go on Twitter and post about my day. And I can post everything I'm doing all day, and I don't have to worry about some guy looking over my shoulder going, hey, are you posting about me? Are you posting about somebody in the office? Are you posting, are you misrepresenting the company, right? Wow, think about that for a second. I get to be completely candid, if I want to, about everything that I'm doing in my career, and I get to get away with it. If I were to say for more than one day, like let's say like two days, three days in a row, that this is too hard, what kind of a wimp am I? What kind of an unmitigated, uh, you know, cowardly, oh, I can't think of a clean word to use for that. Uh, what kind of like just, just craven little sniveling, you know, goon am I that I look that kind of career in the face and say, that's hard. That's like work. You know, so yeah, of course you got to dive back in and then the, you have the good days, you have the bad days. And then the, the last thing I would say to that is, is that ultimately by having little rituals, like say, I am the witness or whatnot, or meditating, you know, you mentioned meditating earlier and actually meditation is something that I used to do pretty seriously for a while there. Um, 
it calms you down and, and it gets easier to get into that cycle or that little ritual to get yourself out of it again. Yeah, it's tough at first and you have days that really drag on or like bad feelings that really drag on and it's tough to get out of it and you know, you, you, either you go have a drink or you vent at your friends or you just put your head in a bag and scream for a while. Uh, but eventually those things start to get easier to get out of. You can, you can spot it earlier, you can spot the bad feelings earlier, and you can pull yourself out of it faster just through the act of repeating those things over and over again. So I don't, I don't even know if I came anywhere near uh, addressing what you threw back at me. Uh, well, I think you did. I mean, the, what, I threw, what I threw back was, uh, was the point that this sounds like, a, a, like something that's expensive to do. Right, um, expensive in terms of time. One thing, uh, expensive in terms of in terms of time, in terms of uh, discomfort and emotion. Right, because it sounds difficult, and uh, and I was trying to you know channel that or what have you. Um, the the like, why would you not do it? But <laughs> uh, but I think what what you and of course I phrased it wrong. You know, just tipping my hat uh, about. <laughs> Because obviously that's uh, I think it's it's a good idea. What what I hear you saying is uh, I, I don't think I could have put it better. It, you having things that are hard are okay. Yep. Uh, it, sometimes it, it's uh, it's not like there's one one single way to deal with with something that is hard, and using skills or tools or practices like. Uh, something to give you a distance on it and use another aspect, right? So you had your emotional reaction and maybe that wasn't a solution, but now maybe you can step back and have like a rational one or maybe with in time have a better emotional one or whatever works. Yeah. Uh, but in some way you've, you've got some distance from the thing and then you've built up some discipline by doing that. And so overall, you you remain effective by being able to get back at it and and uh, right and and it's not it's not as um, simple as just saying like cheer yourself up like let's get psyched up I'm gonna put on some Van Halen and I'm gonna feel like I can go back into the game or anything like that uh, it's no it's, it's Iron Maiden that's the <laughs> proper thing <laughs> I was I was actually gonna say uh, Stan Bush or uh, or ELO does anybody right. listen to ELO anymore <laughs> um I do but anyway uh, it, it's 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 like it sounds like you're talking about like achieving some kind of emotional distance from it too, which isn't to say that like you're being a Vulcan about it. It's just that you're separating yourself from it just a little bit. Uh, it reminds me of something. I haven't mentioned Joseph Campbell in a while. I don't think so. I'll bring him up again. He talks about in one of his lectures, um, you come home from work, you find your family's murdered. What's the one thing that keeps you from cracking up? What's the one thing that sustains you in that, in that hour of calamity? How do you keep from falling to pieces? And he says, what an exercise. Yeah, and he says, yeah, it's a great uh, internal poll, right? It's like, what are the things? And he says, for some people, they say, this is God's will, and that's enough. And that holds them aloft. And he says, but if you don't got that, what do you have? What is the big idea that carries you through all crises? That's a meditation to fall back on and say, okay, you know, uh, what is the big idea that's carrying me? You know, and like some people say, oh, well, what, what's your guidance? What's your, what's your big dream? I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm not talking about something like that you see in like a, a Lifetime original movie where somebody says like, oh, I had a dream that I could do such and such and then a car accident happened, now I can't. Oh, well, this angel came and now I can. You know, it's not like that. I'm just talking about like what's the either the idea, the philosophy, the dream, or the... Um, Sort of set of values, right? And that's the thing you can go back to to reset yourself. If you hit your reset button, then you're centered again, and you can go back into it. So, yeah, and, and um, just to highlight the point, you may not even have emotional distance from it too, but whatever works to uh, give you better options, right? Yeah. You may be steamed as heck, but able to see the better option through whatever you end up using. Um, and that's just, uh, that's just another tool in your toolbox. Uh, to yeah, be, that's, uh, that's true. It's not, disciplined and professional. it's not always about emotional distance, is it? I mean, because like you can make an emotional choice, but give yourself the time to make the informed emotional choice. Like I still feel passionate about this, right? Like, mm -hmm. like when I sent that email to my friend whose feelings were hurt, I was disappointed and a little angry on this person's behalf, right? That was an emotional decision that I made. There was no, there was no value to me or to anybody in the public that that was specifically responding to an emotional need of somebody who I care about. 
you know, right. but th but that was a measured response to the situation rather than going on to Twitter or Facebook or whatever going, this person is a jerk. They made my friend feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's, that's using the, the best of what you know. So you are actually moving effective like someone like, well, like you described how Gordon Ramsay moves through his kitchen, right? Yeah. He didn't, he didn't waste the effort there. Just, uh, just watch the show with the sound off. Just watch it with the sound off and, and just really pay attention to the way that guy moves. It really, oh, it's, it's, it's better than watching somebody dance. I, I, I was just, I was captivated by the way that guy moves around a room. Seriously. I am curious. Um, yeah, cable is such a mixed bag. But, uh... <laughs> well, I was doing, I was watching on Netflix. So oh. I, I, I don't, I don't actually have cable. I haven't watched broadcast cable television in a long time. So, and that's not, I'm not making a statement when I say that. That's just a personal choice. Yeah, it's okay if you do. And I, I, I debate that off and on, you know, from it's, uh, right. I can respect both choices. I, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So anything left in there? Anything left in that bag for me? Oh, let's see. I think we, you I think we covered. You gave the lion aspects. his courage. You gave the scarecrow his brains. Yeah, and I said, "Here's a quarter, kid. <laughs> I want to you know, go play in the railroad tracks." Um, <clears throat> that's uh, no, that's something my grandpa used to say to me. Go play um, in the railroad, railroad tracks. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. Never do 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 do. No, I I think that was really good. Um, the never ready thing. I mean, I I think that whole shotgun blast. Uh, I think that was solid. Uh, and yeah. <clears throat> we may reflect back on this and and. Uh, oh, we're gonna do a survey. Things. Are we gonna do a poll? Inner poll. Like, did we did we achieve our goals today? I will. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> you know, sometimes no, it's just uh, enough to feel like I got excited about some stuff. You know. We're pretty goal oriented yeah, I, guys, but. But sometimes it's just enough to feel like, oh, I, I, I got really enthusiastic about an idea for a little bit there. Absolutely. I know, um, yeah, without a doubt, I'm, I'm certainly pretty darn goal-oriented. But uh, I, I do think you get to the point, um, there's, just, there's different ways to deal with it. I, I used to really swim in goals and tasks and yeah. a, I mean, I've, I've, I built applications to help me work through them. But um, <clears throat> it's... Eventually, I, I like to record it so I don't have to worry about it. But now I, I trust, you know, I trust the disciplines I built up. And yeah. if they aren't working, then I try to, I do try to reflect and do something about it. But um, it's a little less uh, stiff, a little less robotic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it, it yeah, it gets it gets ingrained into your DNA after a while, doesn't it? And you just find yourself kind of doing it almost like as a background process while you're doing other things. And then it'll kind of come to the foreground a little bit, and then you'll chomp on it, and then it'll go back as soon as it's not needed anymore. That, that's another thing yeah. that happens as a result of just being reflective a lot. Uh, being uh, what 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 that girlfriend I was talking about earlier called self-absorbed. <laughs> you just love yourself because you're always thinking about yourself. I'm like, well, first of all, isn't that a good thing to love yourself? Self-preservation, survival, putting, make sure I'm putting good things into my head and 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 mind and body. Um, but then, but then on the other hand, uh, you know, it's not narcissism to, to make sure that you're doing what, cause like, it's like, it's also like, am I being good? <laughs> and that has nothing to do with narcissism. That's purely an outward concern. You're concerned about, am I good? Am I useful? Am I contributing to the larger thing? Right. So mm -hmm. that's the thing she didn't yeah, get. It's, it's, uh, uh, I think it's. Yeah, you can really you can run into that. So if you you, you start trying these things and uh, you you notice that uh, some of your friends are, are are a bit annoyed by it, uh, then yep, I've been there. Listen to my dad. <laughs> he said they're just jerks, son. <laughs> <laughs> True. Your we'll dad is right. <laughs> we'll get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> they're just idiots. Don't pay any attention to him. <sighs> mm -mm. Thanks, Dad. Helped a lot with all those difficult decisions I had to make. Good thing I never had to go into war or anything. Actually, that probably would help me. They're just jerks. <laughs> Point the gun. Yeah. That, that kind of binary thinking would be very useful. Um, okay, well, you know what? We should uh, make some noise about a couple things. So, mm -hmm. um, 
at the time of this recording, I'm going to try to post this one as soon as possible. Uh, but uh, September 25th, no, 23rd, 23rd is the drop dead date to sign up for uh, early bird registration for 30 classes in 30 days at leanintoart.com. We've got 13 classes posted. Just posted uh, three more in the blog today. Uh, we got uh, Kevin Cross's color theory class is scheduled. We've got an introduction to the super rad world of color. Yeah. Hour long uh, presentation. Kevin's going to go into color theory. And that jives very well with a coloring in Adobe Photoshop Elements class that I'm going to be leading shortly thereafter or shortly before. I can't remember where it falls in the calendar, but there's a calendar out there. There is a calendar on leanintoart.com um, that you can subscribe to so you can actually be uh, advised of when these things are actually going to be happening. You can start to get a sense of where the things are going to fall in the schedule in terms of day, but also what time of day these things are going to happen. So mm -hmm. it looks like our live stuff is just about full. I think our, all of our live stuff is full, so now it's a matter of like plugging in some time-shifted classes. Ah, excellent. Well, I... You know, you'll be seeing a, a, a few from me as well. Uh, mine are conspicuously absent right now, but uh, I've been working on other things. You just got back from a convention. You just got back from a long weekend, a long, long road trip. What was the final tally on how long you drove? Was it 14 hours? Oh, uh, no, actually, dude, I flew. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, cheater. No, that's uh, that's how I got uh, yeah, got, got a lot of uh, you know, work done in the airport and all that stuff. Okay, okay. For some reason, I had in my head that you drove. Um, okay, but still, you went on a long trip. You went on a long weekend trip. And uh, so, yeah, you're forgiven. Uh, but but anyway, uh, Krishna Sadas Vam's got a four-part series on there, character design series. So every Saturday, you can be able to take a class with him. I'm going to be doing my Comics Fundamentals course, live presentations, followed by homework assignments in the forum. Where Also going to rock. Yeah, the soup to nuts approach to making a comic or graphic novel. Um, I'll put it this way. I'm not going to toot my own horn. I'm not going to say, like, it's a great class. Nobody should take it. But what I'm going to say is that, hmm, I did it at the Ann Arbor District Library. They institutionalized it the next year. Now it's happening every year. Okay, that's a little pat in the back. That's somebody saying, we believe in this thing, and we're going to carry it every year. So I must do a decent job of it. So uh, that's something you get by signing up for 3030. Uh, Tyler James. He's got uh, creating compelling characters. Yes. Uh, that's going to be a live interactive class. I mean, Tyler James of the 30 Characters Challenge. That knows exactly. a little bit about character design. Organizer uh, and participant in the yeah, 30 Characters Challenge, three years in the running. And yeah, he's got a lot of uh, comic books, uh, you know, beneath his belt and uh, lots of experience uh, <clears throat> on that topic. Absolutely. And then uh, Brandon Dayton of BrandonDayton.com, character designer for EA Games, brilliant illustrator, one award-winning illustrator, is going to do a class on line value and how line value can be used effectively and intentionally to improve your storytelling. So, yeah, holy cow. 13 classes up and already it's pretty amazing. So, yeah, we got another 17 to go to fill in, and then the schedule will be complete. But there should be enough there to get a sense of what you can expect from this thing. So I just want to point people one more time at 30classes30days.com or just go to leanintoart.com and click the 30 classes in 30 days link for more information. There's three different tiers you can sign up for. You don't have to sign up for the gold tier, but I think you probably would get the most out of that one. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot That's of value. That's you get the live interaction. So when, when uh, the workshops that have... Uh, uh, that have the live that aren't time shifted like many of them listed here on on the site yeah. right now uh you will have a chance to participate and act and interact live right you'll still get to see it after the fact but you won't be able to ask that question and i'll tell you one of the things that i hear the most from people who listen to the podcasts i do is they, they when they, when they meet me face to face or they ha send me an email they're like you know i find myself shouting at the ipod while i'm listening to you and it's so frustrating and i i, I don't mean for this to sound like an ad but i do hear this a lot it, it, and actually yeah it's funny cuz yeah somebody's shouting at me <laughs> big surprise uh but the emotional they, they, content it <laughs> ties into our episode <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah they they'll, they'll be shouting a counter argument at me and and, and they mean it as a compliment cuz they're like well you sound so natural and relaxed that I feel like I'm in the room with you and then I find myself shouting at the iPod and so it's great to talk to you face to face. So this is your chance to shout at me. There we go. That's all I was trying to say. 
<laughs> awesome. Which is worthwhile. Actually, I have an example. Um, I was listening to the recent uh, Thunder Punch Daily, and I found myself doing that. No, not Thunder Punch. Uh, the, um, also an awesome podcast, uh, The uh, Fabulous Secrets. Oh, I do too many shows. Something to show for it. Yeah. Um, what were you shouting at me? It's just a really cool... Uh, um, so fabulous secrets, uh, something to show for it. You were talking about how uh, you have you have a class that you, that one of the classes that you're a part of in Ann Arbor was is going to be actually producing a uh, an anthology comic based on a framework that you're going to set up, and you're going to be doing uh, uh, publishing of it through Kablam. Yeah. And I just was hooting and saying, "Oh my God, that's sweet!" and you know things like that. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought it was like, "No, you're wrong," and here's six reasons why. No, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I'm pretty excited nope. about it. We'll see if it works. I mean, I, I've never done it before, so it's totally an experiment. Uh, Dude, it'll... is it hard? Is it probably a bad idea? <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Lock on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. that that will be our slogan from here on out. That'll be our our call to arms for everybody. <laughs> is it hard? Is it a bad idea? So okay. Um. 30 classes in 30 days was the big thing we need to make noise about, right? I mean, there's nothing else going on in our lives for the next two months except this thing. So Yeah, this is big. Uh, now's the time to join it, it's, we, with the discount. It's still a huge deal without the discount. And, of course, we appreciate your support in either case. Uh, yeah. If you're waiting to say, no, I want to you know, provide Lean Into Art with a, 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 you know, more funding. That's wonderful, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, this is not a cheap thing to put on, so... That's why we're actually, you know, asking for a registration fee. But uh, I think it's going to be really worth it. So, yes, uh, the, the other thing you could do is, let's say you can't, you're, you're, you know, money's too tight, economy, yeah, I know, uh, we all know. Uh, then the next thing you could do is tell a friend. You say, hey, there's this thing, it's super cool, these guys are trustworthy, I like what they think about, uh, whatever kind of other loving words you could <laughs> attach to behind our names would be greatly appreciated, so... And, and, and a little bit goes a long way in terms of that. Word of mouth, very powerful. So, Yeah, we super appreciate it. There's our plea. So, okay, now we can get out of here. Uh, good talk, Rob. That was fun. Yeah, thank you, Jersey. Jersey Drozd. That's right. That's who <laughs> I am. We don't introduce each other lately. That, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write on a napkin, I am Jersey Drozd, and I'm going to put it on my mirror, and that'll be my affirmation every day to center myself. <laughs> Why am I doing this? I'm Jersey Drozd. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes then you'll say that every time until i don't know if for sure if i am or not you might be uh yes jersey droves of comics are great.com and then i do a whole bunch of stuff there everything that i do is there the comics that i do all the, the millions of podcasts that i do are all there quick note i was really happy to hear on build and analyze i think it was the other day that i was listening to that podcast Oh, what's the guy on that? The guy who created Instapaper. Uh, Marco Arment. What's his name? Marco Arment. And he took a moment to say how much he enjoys podcasts because it's a more personal, off-the-cuff, and intimate look at what would normally be in a blog post. And I thought, very nicely put. You know, I get I get ribbed by my friends sometimes. Like, like you just love being behind a mic. You just love hearing the sound of your own voice. I'm like, this is a lot easier than typing up a blog post. I'll tell you what. I want to share information. I want to engage with people. Yes. If that makes me an egotist, so be it. Uh, but it's so much faster for me to collect my thoughts this way than to try to type them out, make sure my punctuation is right, that my grammar is correct, and also that the thoughts are even clear, right? Because at least this way, it's a lot faster for me to back up and say, let me try this again. Let me edit this on the fly, and let me. So anyway, I was. It was nice to hear that, and yeah, I do a lot of shows, but you know, it's faster than the the alternative for me. So anyway, and they're good. Yeah, uh, people should listen to them all. <laughs> if you're if you're into uh, these creative topics, I highly recommend them. I listen to them, and you know, I work with Jersey. <laughs> uh, so. But that that reminds me, you do some uh, audio things too. Where, where, where are they? Uh, it's, let's see. So I do, uh, let's see, I do the Polytechnicast, Art Geek Zoo Polytechnicast, which is just a, it's an art journal of, um, so being someone who is uh, adventurous with his art and uh, uh, constantly putting out, in, you know, art goals and whatnot that uh, maybe you'd find interesting. I, I share that kind of thing via that. 
Um, like I, I intend to talk soon about how I'm actually working on uh, nine talks simultaneously. <laughs> Figure that that's it, it, and you're doing 24 you hour comic day. <laughs> that's just one day. The picture kind of, of the, the picture of foolishness right here, folks. <laughs> oh yeah, on the right of the yeah, screen. Yeah. Foolhardy, that's right. the word. Foolhardy, yeah, yeah. I, there you go. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so I do the Art Geeks of Polytechnicast, which uh, it's a little bit of an art journal and talking about these different topics that I that I do. Um, such as uh, uh, working on video games and UI design and how I mishmash these topics together, whatever. So uh, there's that. And uh, let's see. Then I do comics at Art Geek Zoo. And uh, you can kind of find everything that I do at um, either, you know, follow the chain from leanintoart.com or go to interactive-storyteller.com. There we go. So, yeah. So we, we both make a lot of stuff because... Uh, we like thinking about things <laughs> and making things with our hands. <laughs> so we summed it up top to bottom. Uh, if you want to uh, share any input on what we're doing uh, with the show, you could either give us a review on iTunes, because uh, we're out on the iTunes now, or you can send an email to leanintoart at gmail.com. And there is a contact link at the bottom of leanintoart.com as well. Right. Okay, lots of ways to get in touch with us. So, okay, let's get out of here. Uh, good talk, Rob. Good show. I had fun. I hope everybody else did too. Thank you for listening and downloading, everybody. Until next time, I've been Jersey Drozd of ComicsAreGreat.com. I'm Jersey on Twitter. And I'm Rob Stenzinger of Interactive-Storyteller.com and Rob Stenzinger on Twitter. Okay, bye.